Hey, my name is Garrett, and I'm working on Strong by 3, a martial arts combat game. I created this island in Blender this week using an assortment of modifiers and also made this very basic terrain layout so it doesn't look so empty. I tried numerous methods to get this more geometric looking displacement until I finally discovered at the end of the week the remesh modifier, which does exactly what I was looking for. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, I actually went for the sharp remesh option to look a little bit more natural, but I'm still figuring out the look. And you may have noticed some of these transitions in game to create some of these shots, and I'm using the Unity timeline along with Cinemachine. Over the past few weeks, I've been experimenting with it, and I'm still having a bit of trouble trying to do some more tedious stuff with the camera movement and animation. I think it'll make my devlogs a little bit cooler and different, and will help me to make game trailers later on. I did a few random things as well, such as creating a main menu, working on a new character model only to forget that it's a martial arts game and I kind of need all the joints, and I also added some more developer tools such as a teleport function as well as a rule of thirds grid for taking screenshots. And one thing I learned about this week was Blender's modifiers and their strengths and limits. With the island specifically, I'm aiming to make them as procedural as I can so I can rapidly create many different kinds, and I'm trying to make use of Blender's modifiers to accomplish that. You can make a lot of cool things with them, but I've noticed some limitations with the stacking order and the number of options you have. For example, I wanted to use the wireframe modifier around the island to look like string, and I thought it was really cool, but it turns out that I increased the vertices from 20,000 to 160,000, and it doesn't seem like there's really any option to limit that. I also learned more about using reference, which is something I never did. One small tweak I did this week was add a reference image to the right side of my Blender window so I can constantly look at it when I'm modeling. It helped me when I was designing the look of the islands, and after listening to some art talks from Flip Normals, it seems like pretty good practice. Since I haven't really figured out the style of the game yet, I'm hoping a combination of experimentation like I was doing and referencing my references will help me out. And in my martial arts training, I worked again on B-Twist, and a few of them were looking a little bit better. It was a bit frustrating at times, but the more I try, the more chances I have to get it right. Right? So I feel like this week was a really good example of development speed, and how I spent a lot of time trying to design a procedural system for creating the islands, rather than brute force modeling design at the start. Many of the designs I came up with won't be used, which is kind of annoying, but now that I have a design I'm liking, in order to create more islands, it's just a few more button clicks and parameter changes. I'm thinking about creating a product bible, where I lay out the file names, folder structure, model constraints, etc. so that I'm a little bit more organized and clear about what the game will look like, and hopefully that will lead me to developing faster. Thank you all so much for watching, I love every single one of you guys, and if you need anything at all or just want to talk, please message me through Discord, I am more than willing to help or just have a conversation. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next devlog for some more fun.